thank all of you who pray for us. We promise to pass on the blessing to many others. Good morning, Ghana Four. Hello and welcome to Joy News at 6. The news is live on Joy 99.7 and hits 103.9 FM in Accra, in Kumasi on Love, 99.5 FM and over 30 affiliates across Ghana's 16 regions, including Jubilee Radio, Sun City Radio, Keta, Saboba FM, Saboba and A1 Radio, Bolgatanga. Get radio, TV and online content on the MyJoyOnline.com interactive app for Android and iOS devices. Coming up, Electoral Commission dismisses allegations by opposition position NDC that it is illegally inserting the name of an unqualified NPP candidate into the Sin North Voters Register. Also, Gender Minister to increase feeding grant to one city 20 pesos, but this fails to meet Cato's desired rise of at least three cities. The cost per meal, per child, per day has been proposed as one city 20 pesos as we stand now. We'll hear from the minister who assures that the government will pay off third term arrears by next week in business. Government finalizes framework for possible takeoff of financial stability fund next month. The details on the joint business report. And Perez Chapel declares one week fast over Ajahn Asari's Nogoku controversy. We believe that God is our helper. He is our rock. He's the one we look up onto. And later, the mighty has fallen from the competition, becoming the fourth contestant to drop the microphone in week eight of Cues and Lyrics. I am Mamie Sinyamiche Thompson. Details shortly. To our first story, the Electoral Commission has dismissed allegations by the opposition NDC that it is illegally inserting the name of an unqualified NPP candidate into the Asin North Voters Register. A statement signed by the NDC, Sami Jainfi, had alleged this move was geared towards enabling one Charles Opoku participate in the NPP primaries and the Asin North by election. The Commission says the allegation is without merit. My colleague Joseph Akablet joins me with more. What are the details, Blay? So the commission says all one needs to be qualified to contest such a poll is to be a Ghanaian, 21 and above, of sound mind and a registered voter. One does not need to be a registered voter at where he intends to contest. The commission asks that it has not received any such request for transfer from the MPP. The allegation is false and a figment of the author's imagination. Well, the NPP has also issued a statement on this as well. It, yes, that statement is signed by Richard Ahiagba, Director of Communication, and parts of the statement indicates that the Electoral Commission of Ghana only requires a parliamentary candidate to make a statutory declaration to the effect that he or she is a registered voter simpliciter. Unlike the NDC, we are focused on selecting a qualified and capable candidate, one who carries no legal baggage like the NDC's Mr. James Jachi Kwesen to represent the good people of Asin North. The MPP wish is to assure Ghanaians, particularly the people of Asin North, that it is committed to upholding and defending the 1992 constitution. Thank you, Joseph. Now, the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection has proposed a 20 pesos increase on the existing one CD cost of lunch per child under the school feeding program for 2023. However, the increase falls short of the caterers' demands which prompted the nationwide strike in April. The caterers were hoping to get at least three CDs per child to cushion them against the spike in food prices and inflation. But the gender ministry says it can only pay one CD, 20 pesos. Listen to the sector minister, Larry Bazurewa Abudu at the Information Ministry Sunday. The following cost per meal, per day, per child was increased from 8 pesos in 2016, 80 pesos, sorry, in 2016 to one CD. Friends from the media, in 2023, the cost per meal, per child, per day has been proposed as one CD, 20 pesos, as we stand now. 2023, academic year, the cost per meal, per child, per day has been proposed as one CD, 20 pesos, as we stand now. And we are still in talks with the Minister of Finance to see how best if it can be reviewed, we will let you know. But as today, we are with one city, 20 pesos. 
Well, Madame Larry Bazuera Apodu has also noted that government will pay the 2022 third term feeding areas next week. Authorities seem unmoved by the enormous holes in the road that causes cars to jolt. But some young guys have offered to fill them up so they make a career. But have you considered that these young men might be praying against your efforts to get the roads fixed? In our second episode of Ghana Portal Exhibition, features editor Jojo Kobner brings you some reasons why the government may not cover craters in the middle of the road. A sudden sound of porthole symphony. When your vehicle joins the chorus, then be rest assured that a hole will be created in your bank account. Driving on porthole riddled streets means you have to constantly drift off your lane. From afar, you start looking like a drunk, needlessly turning the steering wheel. If you're wondering why the government is not fixing your potholes, the family record me. The bomb passes through to the I said, and I'm a mayor. I pray for heavy rains so that the road would develop more potholes. I'll then come and fix them. I pray that government neglects the road. That is the only way I will get money for my daily upkeep. With so much passion fueled by hunger, he sometimes dangerously approaches drivers and sometimes weaves in between vehicles begging for coins to put food on the table for his family. For three years, he has been filling these potholes with soil on the Iran Clinic stretch, not only for the driving comfort of drivers and passengers, but to eke out a living. Features editor Jojo Kobna with that report. And the Ministry of Roads and Highways has begun educating communities about the impact of the largest motorway connecting five African nations. The Abidjan Lagos Corridor Highway, estimated to cost $15 billion, is an ECOS project that will provide direct access to markets in Togo, Benin, Nigeria, and Cote d'Ivoire, facilitating free movement, enhancing tourism, and manufacturing. Ghana will receive the longest portion of the 1,028 kilometer road including tunnels beneath the Ibri Hills. Chris Apia, the ECOWAS Commission's Acting Director of Transport Infrastructure, Energy and Digitalization, explains how the project will be funded. We are looking at two main sources of financing. The ongoing financial strategy study is looking at the traffic and economic elements for the entire section and packaging or lotting the, the corridor into several packages to be presented to, to investors for financing. The African Development Bank is already considering putting together some financing from the sovereign wealth sources. Meanwhile, the Roads and Highways Minister Kwesia Mokwata reveals that an education campaign to prepare communities impacted by the work has begun. Scores of church members from the Resurrection Power New Generation Church got injured after their bus and three other vehicles crashed on the Mensukrum Wager Junction on the Akrakaswa Highway. Eyewitnesses allege the driver of one of the vehicles, a Toyota Vitz, was driving recklessly under the influence of alcohol leading to the accident. Here are some eyewitnesses who spoke to a sister station at Dumafem. All of a sudden, it sounded like a car had smashed another car. Before we realized, the new generation bus had crashed into the black car, alleged to belong to a policeman, and then his car crashed into another vehicle, which also smashed my taxi. It is the fault of the policeman. He was drunk. After a search in his car, we found alcohol in his uniform. Police now the empire. Paris Chapel International has declared a one-week fast and prayers following the controversy between the church's founder, Archbishop Charles Arjunasari, and the chiefs and people of Nogopo in the Volta region. The presiding bishop of Paris Chapel, Benjamin Oheni Abwaji, made the declaration on Sunday. The controversy surrounding Archbishop Arjunasari began on May 25 when he made a statement during a church service about the Nogopo shrine. I think all of us are not strangers in Ghana. Something that is trending on uh, social media in other places. We, Paris Chapel, from the Executive Council, have taken recognition of all those things. And this is what we, from the Executive Council, is saying. We are declaring a one week fast from the 5th to the 11th. 
You have presiding Bishop of Paris Chapel International, Benjamin Ohene Abwaje. And now to joy Prime's cues and lyrics. The mighty has fallen from the competition, becoming the fourth contestant to drop the microphone. He failed to impress the judges with his vocals when he performed his rendition of To Be a Man by Dax. Here excerpts for week eight's competition. And it happens that mighty, you are the one who is leaving the show tonight. Listen from the valley. People that's in under service of me a wallet. You have a voice, sing with it. This chatting business has got to stop. See a brabe Give me glow, give me glow, give me glow, glow, glow. Remember to catch the repeat of the show at 11 a.m. on Joy Prime. Cues and Lyrics is sponsored by Syntex Tank and the Ghana AIDS Commission. Cues and Lyrics bring on the music. And that's how we wrap up this morning's bulletin in our top story. Electoral Commission dismisses allegation by position NDC that it is illegally inserting the name of an unqualified NPP candidate into their Sin North Voters Register. I am Amir Sinyamicha Thompson. Up next is business on the Super Morning Show.